Hello, hello to all the amazing people. The Neomer here with another Library of Ruina video. And uh, today we're gonna have a chill episode. We're gonna finally catch up on Credence a little bit. I'll also read the Keter and Pina story here. And I'm gonna talk about my future plans. I don't think there will be any receptions in this video. So if you're like looking for that, uh, well, maybe you can like uh, skip this one if you want. But if not, like hang around here with me and well, I'm gonna go to Credenza, read some stories and I'll talk about my opinions. Probably like talk a little bit about game, the balance, how I feel about things. <laughs> For example, the shouting we did yesterday, I totally destroyed it with Gebura there and I really struggled with Bina. But the problem with Bina is that we are only on level 4 while we are on level 6 with Gebura, so obviously it's gonna be a lot easier. Um, so yeah, let's start with... Uh, <clears throat> Kater story here. Well, actually, let's do the Bina first story and then the Kater. I don't know. The order doesn't really matter. Let's see what's up. I wonder how you two perceive me now that your memories have returned to whole. What? What kind of stuff doesn't matter to me anymore? You're much more self possessed than I expected. I can say I'm not that all that uncomfortable, but we're basically in the same oven now. Huh. Come on, Hot, have some confidence. You look even smaller than usual. She's not the person you remember in your past, at least not anymore. I can't guarantee what will happen in the future, but she won't be harming us for a good while. Well, I guess they were enemies. Well, she was like the head arbiter, right? And they were the library, so... No, the lobotomy corp. So I guess uh, there were pretty much sparks going between, right? Hot seems to be very afraid of Bina here and Gebura's like encouraging her. Don't be afraid, little girl. Stand up for yourself. Uh, uh, um, right. Sorry, Gebura. Fascinating. As much as it would be amusing to make a jest of her pitiable state. Gebura is speaking the truth. I'm no longer the being you in interacted with in the past the being <clears throat> interesting interesting when it seems to have ended a new breath of life is given of course i'm not entirely separable from my past self either well none of the people in the library are i have become someone who cannot do any harm to you yet i can still see fear in your eyes what is it that you're so afraid of child I'm in the same circumstances as yours now. I was just nervous since this is our first time sitting face to face and well, talking to each other. Fret not, I have called you two for a simple reason, to have tea together. Well, I guess she didn't want to invite Chest, so she invited Hod instead. She's like, no coffee people here. By the way, I myself, I'm a tea person, I'm not a huge fan of coffee. Although, as I'm getting older and I'm having harder times to get up in the morning, I might have to start caffeinating myself a little bit stronger. We'll see. <laughs> I suggest you drink it before it gets cold. It is best to enjoy it while the scent is warm and able to be savored. Now, I don't care too much about like the scent and the taste. For me, it's just like, you know, the warmth. I think that's the thing that I like the most. Just the warmth and, I don't know, if I just uh, heat it up, water, warm water never really, you know, it's like, uh, does anyone even drink warm water, hot water? I don't think it's not good, right? But when you put tea inside, mm, then it becomes amazing. I also like uh, hot chocolate. Mm, that's pretty great. Well, now I want to drink some hot chocolate. No, we have things to do here. The tea is clear, it tastes a bit sweet. I added lemon juice and honey to the black tea. I prepared it specially for you. Yeah, that's pretty simple. I like to add lemon and honey to the tea, to any tea really. Even those I shouldn't be adding it to. It becomes quite a bit mm, spicy. Well, not spicy spicy, but uh, you know, a little bit sharper to wake you up in the morning. It didn't smell like honey at all. I thought you put sugar. It is because the scent of the honey was lost as it came in contact with the tea. Yeah, I think if you put honey in, in hot water, uh, it loses some of its properties, right? You should probably put honey 
Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Like, I'm not, not an expert. I'm just, you know, do-it-yourself kind of guy and, you know. Too much sugar can make the teal feel muddy, though I suppose it is a matter of preference. It sure is sweet, not too bad. Did you know black tea has several names across various regions? Oh, by the way, I thought black tea is kind of bitter, is it? Not? So maybe that's why she put honey in it to make it less. Oh, I think I heard about that. Some call it black tea based on the color of the leaves, and some call it red tea since the color of the tea is red. I guess it's the difference between valuing the essence and the results. Oh, there is a metaphor somewhere in there with the whole tea thing. Perhaps you could view it that way. So let me ask you, how would you like to refer to this tea? That's a tough question. What's the big deal? Just call it whichever name you're more used to. Yeah, I agree with Gibura here. Just keep it simple. Like, there's no need to make like the whole science out of it. The whole philosophy out of the tea. If that is what you're saying. No, she's probably like... You should have called in somebody who appreciates simple nu nuances. Maybe chest. Even though he is like a coffee dude, he would probably appreciate your your tea nuances more than Gebura here especially his uh, you know is it rather entertaining to converse with you come again later when you long for the scent of tea so she makes tea parties and then chest doesn't make coffee parties chest just drink, gives coffee to Roland and that's about it speaking of Roland <laughs> Hey there! What are you guys talking so seriously about? Wait, didn't I already see this one? This is a serious matter indeed. Right, this issue has to be settled now. We are in so much trouble! Just tell me what's going on. Nietzsche, run off! <laughs> Wait, what? Really? No, he's just probably... Like, <laughs> drunk and fainted someone between... between like... <laughs> uh, like between the couches or something. The floor of art was responsible for cleaning the library's corridors this week. Yeah, he didn't run off, he's just hiding somewhere, <laughs> so you do it instead of him. What? Do you have any guesses on where he might be? Come on, roll and tell them. No, of course not. No, no way. Um, oh, Roland knows. That's so funny. He knows where Nietzsche is. They probably drank together and he knows where he fainted. His assistant librarians must have all disappeared with him too. Cleaning? I don't remember ordering to clean this place. We've concluded that while each librarian should clean their own rooms, it is better to take turns to clean the corridors as they're public spaces used by all of us. You lot always love to cause a bigger fuss than necessary, don't you? Do you want us to stop it? No, I don't mind it. Thank goodness. Anyway, that's why I've been wondering. Just where did Nietzsche hide away? Alright, here's Nietzsche. Okay, did she just summon him? <laughs> what the, what happened? It takes no effort for me to locate and relocate you lot whenever I'm wherever in this library you may be. Nicha, they promised to keep the order we decided on. You're so mean running away when it's your turn. You reek of alcohol and so do your assistant librarians behind you. I can explain. There's a good explanation for this. Well, of course it is. He wanted to drink, right? <laughs> That's a good explanation. <laughs> what explanation? Let's hear your story then. Now, now, Nietzsche will surely be careful next time. That's enough scolding. No, I must hear what he has to say. Nietzsche! Look, I didn't feel like cleaning, but I still was gonna do it. I was grumbling to myself about it, and Roland came along and said he found a good spot to goof off. Well, now it's gonna be Roland's fault, right? Nice job, he covered for you and you threw him under a bus. Says he'll tell me where I shared some of my beer and how can I skip clean... Mm -mm. <laughs> Says he'll tell me where if I shared some of my beer and how can I skip cleaning... <laughs> oh, Roland, you better bail. 
looks like he's still too drunk to speak straight. <laughs> he sure loves to drink for someone so weak with it. Uh, Roland? Is what Nietzsche said true? Uh, no, can't be. I can faintly smell alcohol from you as well now that Nietzsche's confessed it. I'm disappointed in you too. Yeah, Alright, I'm sorry. I'll help Nietzsche clean the quarters today. So please forgive me. Hmm, no. How about you join them on the cleaning roster from now on rather than just for today? Oh, snap. Oh boy, Roland. There you go. That was some pricey beer you paid for there. Gonna be cleaning from now on. What? That's a good idea. I could forgive your misbehavior today in that case. Good luck with the cleaning then. You're also prone to make a fuss, aren't you, Roland? <sighs> okay, this was a funny one. I liked it a lot. Oh, there's another one. Let's see how the cleaning is going. <laughs> Put that really face out of my sight. Come on, you're acting up again. I liked you a lot better when you were just a box of steel. Oh, wow, really? I guess today is my lucky day. Getting compliments from Gebura of all people. Huh? That wasn't supposed to be a compliment, you... Alright, cut it out, you two. Aren't you sick of fighting already? The steel, hair turd, keep shrubbing coffee in my face. Well, doesn't coffee go well with smokes? Well, I don't do either, but... Uh, I'm getting what's so good about a cup of bitter bean water. It's an acquired taste, you know. Go lap up that taste yourself then. I don't want to bother getting used to it. Well, if you are in such a bad terms with chest, what are you doing here in the first place? Hmm, Gebura? Don't be so sour. I got something sweet for the both of you this time. So give it a try for my sake. Please? You mean the Makiarito or something? Mm, that's the one. It's actually called Macchiato, though. <laughs> Macchiato. Macchiato. Whatever, it's all the same to me. That one was edible, I'll admit. It wasn't a huge fan of it, though. My, the flavor of caramel was too strong for my liking. Thus, I've prepared a cup of Vienna this time. This will suit you better. Thanks for being considerate, but uh, why do you keep recommending us coffee anyway? Well, you see, I thought it'd be nice to make at least one friend who understands the savors of coffee, you know. Why was this story on the couture, though? That's, that's like, confusing me a little bit. Maybe because couture, doing a couture triggered it? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I couldn't drink coffee. I could drink coffee with you if you're so desperate for a coffee, buddy. Mm, you just seemed weirdly insistent with Gebura. Yeah, I don't wonder what's up with that. Well, how should I put it? See, the thing about Gebura is that um, her reactions are fun to watch. <laughs> what? <laughs> the air is taking a sharp turn to be menacing. Oh, I was just kidding. I mean, it's nice that we can gather around from time to time for a drink, isn't it? There's no better reason than a hot cup of joe to bring us all together and chill. It's true, we'd usually be shut up in our own floors doing our jobs if it weren't for breaks like this. Is that what this for? There's no reason to make it about coffee, right? Maybe he doesn't have any other excuses. You hit the bullseye there, Tip. Forget it. In that case, I could just come up here with Tipford to hang out more often. Oh, they're making friends. That's so nice. I don't think we're that friendly with each other. Ah, come on, Tipford. Like, friendship's important. But still, it seems silly to me that you're trying to make up reasons for us to meet when all you need to to do was ask. Well, people do that in real life as well, right? They don't want to expose themselves, so they don't, like, they play games with each other. They're like, they don't say, like, I want to see you, I want to hang out with you, I miss you. They just say, like, I don't know, we didn't go for a coffee in a while, so let's just do it. And then the other person does the same, yeah, we didn't do it for a while, so let's just go. And then they meet, and then they drink anything but coffee. That's so usually, that's like the usual way it goes in my country. I'm honored to hear that. Well, I know that I don't drink coffee. Yeah. So back to this coffee. Mm, wanna give it a try? No reason to refuse a cup you prepared for me. 
There we go, the first that's the spirit. Okay, so we did those stories. Um and now well now we have to go through credenza. So I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna check out real fast. So here we can get the book of the thumb. And here we can get uh, Dennis, Boris, Kalo, and Catriel. So I'm gonna go and check out that. So books. So there's a thumb. There's Boris, Catriel, Dennis, and Kalo. Yeah, I think we read this. Yeah, this was the meeting where <laughs> it was all about the rules and hierarchy. So I'm pretty sure I read all of these. Uh, let me just... Yeah, that's how significant the hierarchy he is to us. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we did that one. Okay, let's go to the next one. So here we got Church of Gears worshippers. Pretty sure we read that one as well. Yeah. The gear guides my body as it rotates. That was an interesting one. We met Elena, Elise, or whatever she was there. Okay, then we go here. Leo section 2. Well, actually, you know what? I should be checking it like this, upwards. Uh, then we got Index, Esther, Hubert, and Gloria. Index, Esther, Hubert, and Gloria. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Mm. So Esther, Hubert, and Gloria. But where's the index thing? Book of the index. It's not there. There's no story for that? guess not I'm pretty sure we have like a million of those though right yeah index an index proselytes page oh I know what's up we met them here before that right oh, maybe not yeah we did Okay, so we read that inside the Urban Nightmare thing. Interesting that you can get an Index Proselyte page here. And then once again here. So we got Esther, Hubbard and Gloria here. I don't actually remember if I read all of that. So I'm gonna take a quick look here. Gloria. Have you seen the sword Hubert's carrying? It looks so heavy and he swings it like it's nothing. Okay, I'm pretty sure we read that one. And then Esther. We also read Esther. I suppose the prescripts have some generosity for those forgers as they may remain unpunished unless a prescript ordering it has been issued. Well, Jan was forging prescripts, I remember reading this. The number of ranks within the index, process, messengers, proxies, as much as I know. Right, we read that as well. The prescripts are truly unpredictable. Well, yeah. It's a little bit mysterious how... We did find a little bit out about how they are made and everything. And then we fought Jan and it was pretty interesting of a story. And then finally Jan here. So we got the book of uh, distorted Jan here. And I think we did read this one as well. This is the whole story of how he was struggling and forging prescripts and thinking that he was actually free, while he was actually not. So quite, 
So I want someone to find an answer in my stat and I hope they can tell me that. Tell me how I can enjoy this nightmare. So yeah, he's quite a bit in a nightmare. Stuck. Stuck inside prescripts. Whatever he does, it seems like they foreseen everything. Okay, so that was the Church of the Gears. So then we got the Red Mist, the Book of the Red Mist. And I'm pretty sure we read that one. It's all about how she acquired her armor and the sword. Yeah. When I first had the sword in my grip, I didn't feel anything in particular. A few days later, Carmen spilled out all the guilt within her and plunged into it, never to come back up. Oh yeah, I remember this is like the... The really sad story about Carmen and stuff. And then we got the... The purple tear. Not sure if I actually had time to read that one though. <laughs> if you're reading this book, it must mean there's something you want to know about me. I'm sure you have lots of questions, but I sadly can't give you out detailed answers. Yeah, we did that one. Lots of people ask me what I'm going to such a great lengths to see. A leading figure that commands powerful fixers who are on the level of color. I don't know, all I want is to meet my son. Yeah. She was traveling a lot through the mansions and stuff. But it always ends up being a mirage. So many sad stories. So she lost her son apparently and she tries to find him. Pretty good page though. <laughs> then we got Leo section 2 here. And Lovell, Cecil and May. Oh. Well. I guess that one we need to read. Um, that's interesting. I don't have neither. Okay. So when I fought that, it was kind of a hard fight, so I didn't get enough books to actually get all the pages. Okay, let's see. May, fervor, remain vigilant in peace. Whenever the emotional level rises, record 25% of max stagger resist unless the character is staggered. Wait, what? Oh, that's interesting. Mm. No, it's not enough, because stagger is only 50 or so, so this will give you 12. But still, like, if you level up 4 times, you will get all the stagger back. How much will Mindhaller give you? Well, Mindhaller is probably much better for longer fights, right? Yeah, and this one becomes useless after you get to level 5, and that's when you might need it the most. If I didn't have enough mind hollers, I would take this, but you can get eight, so. Cecil, firm as a great mountain. Whenever the motion level rises, record 15% of max HP. Well, now this one's interesting. This one's interesting. I could take that on somebody because I only have four health hollers. I actually like this one a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I like this firm as a great mountain. I think that's good. I think that's really good. Well, that's cool. Um, all out war. Well, emotion points are really not that important for me anyway. Raise the grass always gives an emotion point. This thing also always gives the emotion point. Because the second attack will always roll min or max, and you get the motion point when you roll a min or max. Okay, let's read those stories. Um... Not sure if you read this, but I'm gonna read them all. So just so we get like a whole picture about the Leo section 2 here. 
a Leo Section 2 Fixers page. Leo Association is a battle-oriented fixer association specializing in all-out combat. Yep, they are combat masters, alright. We receive requests from wings and fight great battles for them. Some may see Leo's fighting style as old-fashioned, but we get frequent requests from those who want strong, willed and determined warriors. <laughs> Most requests that come our way aren't complicated. 9 out of 10 are resolved by simply marching towards enemies and defeating them in battle. It doesn't require specific strategies or certain personnel. We are the Liu, the association that solely exists. We are the Liu, the association that solely exists for war. That doesn't mean war is the only type of request we accept. After all, a fixer is free to take any request. The catch is that all requests must be reported to the HANA association after you deal with them. The report must include the details of the request, the client's info, how the case was resolved, and any other relevant information. Once the report has been submitted, HANA Association will assess the performance of the office and its fixers and evaluate them for promotion or demotion. That's how the grades of offices and fixers are updated. Therefore, a fixer's grade doesn't necessarily correlate with strength. One last thing I'd like to add is there is a fine line of fixers that shouldn't cross. That there's a line fixers shouldn't cross. A fixer may advertise themselves of, or their office to get more requests, but they should not threaten people to give requests to them. This is an area handled by the HANA associations and OFI association, a specialist in dealing and transactions. Of course, associations shouldn't have to worry about running out of requests in the first place. Well, if you do a well job, uh, new jobs will come, right? Use your reputation to gain some more. Cecil. The Liu Association is an association that specializes in warfare. We work for the single goal of victory. However, victory isn't necessarily won in battle. The ideal course of action begins by identifying the reason the enemy intends to fight in the first place. Well, <laughs> this grunt was all about, yeah, go, march, fight, kill, and then now Cecil's like, no, 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 sometimes diplomacy is the answer. Next, we break the enemy's will. Only then will we launch an attack on enemy forces. Oh, <laughs> there go anyway. <laughs> Even when war is inevitable, we mustn't hope for victory after starting the war. Secure a path to victory before engaging in warfare. The Liu, this sounds like something from Sun Tzu. <laughs> the Liu engages in battles that are already won, with a strategy that is fated to lead us to triumph. We face enemies that are fated to lose. Well, I don't know how you prepared for the library, but... Uh, well, considering you're a book now, something went wrong. In other words, we don't participate in a war that cannot be won. Blindly charging into the fray isn't always the path to victory. And while strategizing allows you to look ahead and see where victory lies, it doesn't ensure that you will reach it. Therefore, it's crucial to assess the strength of the ally and the condition of the enemy before you determine if you should advance or retreat. It's up to the director of each section, our leaders basically, to decide what to prioritize and what to discard. For instance, Director Lovell is extremely cautious. He is not hesitant to retreat and reorganize his forces if there is a slight disadvantage. On the other hand, Director Xiao tends to push forward as long as there is an opportunity to count on. But she isn't reckless about it, she designs elaborate strategies that will overcome the odds. Director Lovell's choices aren't always wise, and Director Xiao's choices don't always result in a smooth victory. But the two work their hardest between their abilities. Well, yeah. So yeah, different, different approaches. And Xiao was talking about the differences between her and Lovell as well in her story of how they met and how they fell in love. Ah. Such a wonderful thing. Mace Page. Outside of weapons and martial arts, the most important thing that provides us with protection is our clothing. It might look like fancy suit with golden decorations at first glance, but you know how a fixer's attire is no ordinary clothing? It's mandatory for people working in relatively higher sections to wear clothing adorned with the Moonlight Stone. M Corp Singularity. Oh, this is the first time we hear about M Corp Singularity, I think. I was wrong when saying stuff like this before. Moonlight Stone. Of course, the Liu doesn't have the exclusive right to use it, so you can see it on the clothes of other fixers and syndicate members too. The Moonlight Stone emits a golden glint and you can either glit your clothes, gild your clothes with it or make ornaments out of it. But what does it do? Does it protect you? Does it give you more mana? Hahaha. <laughs> Anyhow. <coughs> the Moonlight Stone mitigates or shuts, there we go, of psychological affliction induced from all kinds of mental attacks pressure, interference and all that, whether it's caused by seeing, hearing or feeling something, or a direct 
<laughs> see no things, hear no things, tell no things, or a direct assault to the mind, although I don't really know how the stone works. They said it amplifies a single purpose or thought, making people forget the mental pain coming from outside, or fortifying the mind as if it was surrounded with a giant barrier. It's all thanks to this clothing that we didn't panic when we saw the crying children, a distortion. <laughs> so yeah, so when I read that, seeing, hearing and feeling something, I kind of remembered the crying children. Cool, I like it. So yeah, they had these moonstones that protected them from like going crazy when they saw the distortion. Cool. And then finally Lowell. Chao was a cold person who wouldn't easily show her feelings. Even though the Liu consists of those who only face forward and never express any emotion in battle, Xiao was especially hard-edged above the rest. I came to wonder if she was capable of possessing emotions at all. <laughs> her tone was dry in the most upsetting situations and she seemed apathetic to the loss of several colleagues, never showing her emotions in response to anything, but roughly looking after herself. That was my impression of Xiao. I thought that the path Xiao was walking was completely different from mine. We disagreed on every aspect, from strategies to personalities. I thought my relationship with her would stay a formal relation between the two co-working directors of an association. Well, they were both thinking that and they were both horribly wrong. Sometimes love be that way. I don't remember when and how we got so close to each other. I couldn't be bothered to push away the person who naturally come, came to my side. We started spending more time together outside of work. People intersect one another somehow, though. That's what she said as well. This time I say it like, you know, pretense. That's really what she said. People intersect one another somehow. Something like that she said. Though, I have no clue how our paths managed to converge or what about the paths led to them cross. One thing I can say for certain is that mm, our relationship isn't a superficial bond between two directors. We need each other because we cherish each other, not the other way around. Can you really call it love if you only cherish your significant other because you need something out of them? Well, you don't. You, you can call it, but that's not true love, not in my opinion anyway. But love is such a complicated topic. At the very least, I don't think Xiao as an object of exploitation nor gratification. Well, good for you, Lowell. That's so nice. So you're not a dick. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. However, I know that preaching love is utterly meaningless in this city. No, come on. They are both so pessimistic. A fixer should never be carried away by emotion. I know well that a person at a position as high as mine should be extra careful. I've seen countless fixers who brought private methods to the official grounds only to meet undesirable results. The moment you get swayed by something you cherish, you lose yourself. You neglect your own safety. When a human, a creature that always puts itself above all else, loses their edge because of what they hold dear and places higher priority on it over their own life, the consequences will be grim in any case. Yeah, it's uh, complicated mixing job and emotions, that's for sure. So like, yeah, in... Here on Earth... <laughs> here on Earth... <laughs> in real life, uh, such a like a relationship with, between high-ranking members would be sh would be shunned at probably. Knowing this, I decided to remind ourselves of one thing when we plight, plight our throat. Whatever happens to each other, we won't put ourselves at risk. Well, that didn't go so well, did it? As I thought Xiao agreed plainly and rightly, I could trust in Xiao, and I was glad to have this person as my lifelong partner. It was reassuring to know that Xiao wouldn't throw away her own life if I ever died. Ah, Lowell. Well, I guess she did disappoint him then. She did throw her life away to try to save him. Focus on my own survival, even in a mortal peril. Perhaps my heart has grown stronger since I met her. Having her next to me was already a great help to me at that point. And now I'm not gonna read the whole Shao thing because we did it uh, yesterday. Yeah. Let me see. There we go. It is said that people intersect with one another in some manner. So that's the sentence. And I plan to reunite with you soon. I want to tell you that I no longer have shame for the path I've chosen and that I have finally freed myself from the guilt. Cool. So that's uh, the story of the Liu. So we got... Let's see. Yeah. Lowell Cecil May. Oh, there's also Chan. 
Okay, let's do that as well. To a leader of the Liu, the most crucial element that can make or break a battle is vigor. Not the competence or strength of individuals. With vigor, even the weakest creek can carry heavy rocks like a gale blowing up leaves. Therefore, an excellent leader chooses good fixers and then puts vigor into them. Strength or skill alone won't make a good fixer. While those traits do play a role in higher sections, the most important quality is how well the fixer meshes with their leader's combat style. Section 2, the team with Mei and Cecil, consists of careful and level-headed fixers. They go quite well with Director Lowell because of that. Section 1 would clearly be superior in terms of sheer power, but we follow different strategies with pros and cons for each. So a direct comparison won't really tell much about our actual performance in the field. Right. So like is the section 1 outranking the section 2 or they're just two different sections on the same rank? The more I read about it, the more it seems like they're on the equal grounding. My first uh, instinct was that section 1 is probably above because everything in this game is ranked by numbers. So it might be, although this dude is section 1 and he admits that uh, section 2 might be stronger in some areas and it's not even possible to compare the two, which is pretty interesting. Thing. And then we got uh, Miris. Director Chao like to emphasize something. Wait, where's the where's the Chun? There's no story about Chun. Director Chao like to emphasize something. A mercenary's work is so to deceive. To fool the enemy into believing that we are advancing when we defend. To make the enemy believe we will trust from the front when we strike from above. Feign submission when you raise your claws. We must seem unable when we able when able to attack that the enemy may grow arrogant. When enemies rouse, distract them through disturbance. Be aware that we ourselves are not subject, subject to such anger. In order to defeat the enemy, we must be roused to anger, to remember that one's emotions must remain a means to motivate the body and not the end, and to exploit the enemy's wrath with this in mind. Our director may be seized with anger and momentarily stray into inadvisable paths sometimes, but even the whitest jade has a flaw. I trust her to set herself back onto the right track in no time. Right, so yeah, Xiao really did go lose a little bit. I think we need to burn some chance, actually. Well, I guess there will be a reception this episode. Oh, it will not, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll probably need that book though, right? No, no. Maybe not. Somebody else needed it lower. Oof, that's good. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the Chun Chun is all about. Uh, chun. Chun Chun Chun. Furious fire rending the skies. At the start of the scene, two random combat pages in hand gain the following effect. While this page is being used, inflict twice as much burn with combat page abilities. Eh. I don't like burn too much, so whatever. Uh, let's read the Chun Chun then. Right now, Nest L is practically a war zone with all the association syndicates and fixers at each other's throats. On top of that, the distortions are making things worse for associations and the residents of the Nest. According to the report from the powers up above, there are three major factions of note currently remaining in the Nest. The Index, R Corp and the Blue Reverberation and his group. R Corp seem to be eliminating threats as per request from another wing, similar to what the Leo is doing. The Index appears to have been guided here by the prescripts. After all, they gladly obeyed the piece of paper telling them to kill every member of the Thumb in the nest. As a result, pretty much every Thumb crook and the Syndicate subsidiaries that were in this place are goners. Even the underboss who was supposed to lead them kicked the bucket, so you can guess how it went. Oh. But... 
how does he know that? Oh yeah, we get the chance page here. No, we don't. We get the chance page here. In theory, you could have unlocked Chan before Kalo hit the bucket. So that's a little bit discrepancy there. I think it's quite possible to do this before doing this. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I find it a little bit weird that Chan... Uh, if I'm right here... If this is referring Kalo, maybe this is referring somebody else. In any case, yeah, it is a war zone, that's for sure. And, uh, well, we were there as well. And then we got uh, Nemo, Martina, Bada in the office. I'm pretty sure we read all about that. The, the contract office. They got messed up. Yeah, notarization, contracts. We live in turbulent times. Patent war breaks out for so many reasons. It will take a day and a half to list them out. Okay, yeah, we did that. That was interesting. And then we got the RRR here. Uh, Mio and the rabbits team. And then we got this. Okay, I'm pretty sure I did not actually read the stories of, the, of all of these. There should be a lot. There should be a lot. Uh, so here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do this next time. And then I'm gonna do like an episode where I'm gonna be reading out all of these and all of whatever we get here. And yeah, that's gonna be it. So uh, I'm gonna get shower ready for tomorrow. I'm gonna go here. Now, I don't know how exactly to equip her because I have no idea what Nine Children of the Dragon is. So I'm just gonna give her like a regular set of pretty good cards. So she's gonna end up having something like, well, I have no good example here, but I, I think something pretty close to what Esther's using right now. So a couple of energy cycles, couple of leaps. Are we going without smoke? Hmm, that's a good question. So either something like that, of course, without castigation, or something like this obviously with not so much peers but or maybe actually you know what she's gonna be the most similar to do we just make her similar to yay yeah yay is pretty balanced Concentrations to the defense, will of the prescript. Something to gain smoke with, obviously not this because this is exclusive. But maybe uh, vapor, vapor, and uh, the rest seems good. So vapor, smoke smash, and guidance of the gears. Concentration, energy conversion. There is no graze the grass here. Maybe graze the grass instead of unlock. Something like that, I'm gonna put on show. But I'm gonna do that off video, just gonna show you the end result. And I also have to figure out what uh, what perks to take. And yeah, that's gonna be cool. What group are we going with? That's a good question. Well, <laughs> I like Gebura so much. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with Gebura. I mean, I played with the others a little bit more, but uh, Gebura is clearly the strongest, right? I mean, Bina can situationally be super powerful considering her unique set of pages and being able to lock enemy dice, but um, she's not on 6 yet and then Hawkmas just weird, right? I really don't like this thing. So powerful, but so unusable. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Gebura, I guess. I guess we could give some love to some other ones, but everyone had their chance to play. I decided Gebura's the best. So we're gonna go duo, duo ego here. We're gonna go uh, Gebura and Xiao and uh, and then the purple tier. We have so many strong characters right now. It's gonna be good. Anyhow, that's gonna be for this episode. Uh, if you're enjoying my work, 
subscribe. If you're already subscribed, uh, like the videos. In the meantime, I wish you to have a wonderful day, do something nice. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you back tomorrow for some action. The new mer signing out. Bye bye.